There are several ways that we can add CSS in Angular. So far, we've seen that we can add styles right in the component metadata with the styles property. So that's one way we can do it. Other ways we can include styles and in components include adding embedded style sheets right within the component template, linking to external files from the component template with a link tag, using CSS imports, and adding them inline in the markup themselves, and then my personal favorite, using an external style sheet with the style URLs property. So let's take a closer look at each of these different methods. First up, we have the method that we've been using so far, the styles property. Something we haven't yet covered is that we're using the backticks here, which in TypeScript allows for multi-line formatting. If we were to use single quotes instead, we'd have to put everything up on one line. We probably would never really want to do that, so it's important to understand the difference. And this is the same for the component template as well. So with the styles property, we simply add styles as we would within an external style sheet, but we're just adding them here within the styles block. And we've already looked at how Angular processes these styles with the custom scope name attributes and inserting them in the head, so we won't spend any more time on them here. Instead, let's move on and look at adding styles directly within the template itself. To add styles directly into the component template, we just need to add the style element and then add styles within it. When we look at this in the browser, we can see that our styles are all good. This thing looks as we'd expect it to. What's crazy though is that these styles will be treated just as those using the style property in component metadata, meaning that once rendered, they will have been moved from their original location in the template and inserted into the head. They will also get all of the crazy Angular scope name attributes as well. Let's take a closer look by inspecting this. So here we can see that Angular has added the scoping attributes, and we can see that there's no style block here. So when we look at the head, we can now see our style block has been inserted here instead. So this method works basically the same as when we add them using the styles property. No real difference other than where we add the styles. Now if we don't want to use the styles property or an embedded style sheet, we can add them externally and then add a link tag to reference them. This is very similar to how we add styles in traditional web applications. We add a link tag with a relationship attribute of style sheet, followed by an href with the location of our external style sheet. And to follow the Angular style guide, we'll name this file with the same name as our component, but we'll give it a CSS extension. Here, our style sheet is in the root of our application in the app directory, but if it were elsewhere, nested within a different directory, we'd need to add the full path to the style sheet. It's not relative to the component itself. Angular will handle this method in the same manner as the embedded style sheet. So if we examine our component, here we can see that Angular has added the scope name attributes. Also, we can see that our link to the style sheet has been removed. Well, if we take a look at the head again, we can see that Angular has properly scoped our styles and moved them here once again. This method is nice because it separates out our styles into their own file and puts it in a familiar CSS editing environment with the same end result of properly scoping the component styles and inserting them in the head. Now, what if we want to bring in multiple files but don't want to add a link for all of them? Well, we can use CSS imports. We just add imports as we would a normal CSS file. Once again, our files are right in the root of the app. But when using imports like this, we'll need to make sure that the path to the style sheets are relative to the file that's importing them this time. So how does Angular handle these imports? Let's take a look. Here we can see that Angular has once again added the scope name attributes. And if we examine the head, this time we see multiple style blocks. The first is our imported global style sheet. The second is our imported list style sheet. And the third, well, that's our imported link style sheet. So this is pretty nice. It allows us to potentially break up larger style sheets into much smaller, more organized files. The only thing that I don't like about this is the fact that multiple style blocks are added when rendered, but that's really just a matter of preference. Another way that we can add styles to our components is to add them directly in line on the markup elements themselves. This is probably not how we want to do it for obvious reasons, but it's good to know all the different ways that we can add styles so that we can make the best decision for any given situation that may arise. So if we add styles in line, Angular will actually not do anything with these styles, they'll just render as expected. So if we inspect our component, now we can see these styles remain right where we added them. 
Okay, so those are all great, but my personal favorite method is again using external style sheets like we saw earlier, but this time using Angular's style URLs property to link to them as opposed to a traditional link tag. I like working in this way because for one, it's easier to set up. It doesn't require a link tag with a relationship attribute and the path to our file. Instead, it just needs a property with the file name. I also like it because it's how most of us are used to working with CSS. One of the biggest drawbacks to the other methods is that we're writing CSS in TypeScript. So depending upon our editor, there's a lack of syntax highlighting and code completion for CSS. That's what's great about using external files is that they have a CSS extension, meaning that our editor will open these files in their proper CSS editor. To use this method, we need to first add a CSS file for our component, just as we did earlier. Next, we need to tell our component to use this file, so we'll add it to the metadata with the style URLs property. This property will take an array of URLs to existing style sheets, but we currently only have a single file, so we add our file here. By default, the URL to this file is relative to the application root, so we need the path to it accordingly. We can make this a little cleaner, though, by eliminating the relative path info. To do so, we add the module ID property with the value of module.id. There, now we can add our CSS file without the path. Okay, so how does Angular handle this? Well, let's take a look. When we inspect our component, we can see once again that the scoping attributes are added, but where and how are the styles added this time? Well, the other methods put styles in the head, so let's take a look there. And there they are. So Angular simply inserts these styles into a style block in the head, just like the other methods. Pretty cool stuff going on here. This approach is very similar to the traditional link element to point to our style sheet, but the main difference is that it's simpler to set up. It just requires the style URLs property and the name of the file as opposed to the link element with a rel and href. At this point, it's important to note that we can take the same approach with our template. And in most cases, this will be a better way to work as well. So we simply add an HTML file next to our component with the same name. And then we reference it from our component metadata using the template URL property. So up to this point, we haven't used a preprocessor like SAS, LESS, Stylus, etc but I would recommend that we do. It just makes working with CSS in large applications so much easier to work with. I could go on and on about why, but that's a topic for another course. For now, we're focused on working with styles effectively and efficiently in Angular. So for the rest of this course, we'll be working with SAS. In order to do this, we'll simply convert our file to the SCSS extension. There's no need to update our style URLs to point to the SCSS file since we'll still need to reference the resulting CSS. And in order to get SAS to properly function within this project, we need to add something to process our code and convert it to CSS. I chose to add Node SAS. I also needed to add RimRAF to wipe out the untracked transpiled CSS files on save, and I needed to add a few tasks to watch and clean up files as needed. You can see these changes in the package.json file in the root of the demo. There, now we can use SAS.